If we look at Wikipedia, we will see that the law of Demeter, a law in short, or principle of least knowledge is a design guideline for developing software, particularly object-oriented programs. In its general form, the law is a specific case of loose coupling. Okay, sounds great, but what does it really mean? A general formulation of the law is the following. Each unit should have only limited knowledge about other units, only units closely related to the current unit, or each unit should only talk to its friends, don't talk to strangers. Great, sounds clearer, but still not enough practical. The formal object form of the law can be summarized as a method of an object may only call methods of first, the object itself, second, an argument of the method, third, any object created within the method, fourth, any direct properties, fields of the object. Oh, at last, the practical meaning becomes clear. Moreover, all these guidelines in the end came to the following simple statement – don't talk to strangers. Another simple formula of this law is – use only one dot. Ok then, let's consider a practical example which was suggested long ago by David Bock as a great illustration of the problem. Consider the following case. Let's pretend that we should model the business relationships between a paperboy and the customer who wants to buy magazines. A paperboy rings the doorbell, a customer opens it, a paperboy somehow has to be paid and then hand over a magazine to the customer. Let's look at the code example which models the case. Here's a simple customer class which has first and last names and it also has a wallet of type wallet. Here you can see the wallet class. It is extremely simple. It just stores the decimal value which determines the amount of money in the wallet. The client of the wallet API can add money to the wallet, can withdraw money and check the current amount of money. Looks good and simple. It is just fine and should fit our needs. The last thing is to implement the logic of a paperboy. Let's look inside. The paperboy class exposes a single method – deliver magazine, which takes the cost of that magazine and the customer to which a paperboy has to deliver the magazine. Looks great, let's look at the implementation. A paperboy just takes the wallet of a customer and then checks the amount of money. If there is enough money, the paperboy just takes the needed sum, otherwise a paperboy just goes away. Great, one would say. But what do you think? Is it really great? If you think a little bit deeper, then you may come out with the idea that there is something strange in the fact that a paperboy takes the wallet of a customer in order to be paid. A paperboy has access to customer's wallet. What a nonsense! Would you be so kind to give your wallet to unknown paper boys? I doubt. So, in this case, the violation of the law of Demeter is obvious. The paper boy operates with a wallet through a customer. The first dot here in the code is when a paper boy takes the wallet. Then there's a second dot when he checks the amount of money in the wallet. The same case when a paper boy withdraws some money. To describe the problem more seriously, I should say that the main problem with this design is that the paperboy is being exposed to more information than he needs to be. All the problems are the consequences of this fact. So now these three classes are tightly coupled. If we change the wallet class, we may have to make changes to both of the other classes. By the way, if a wallet is null, then a paperboy will throw the null reference exception. So it might be that in the real world code base, the paperboy class will have to deal with it introducing null checks and as a consequence cluttering the code. So how to fix the problem? In order to fix the problem, we can just model the real world scenario. When a paperboy delivers a magazine, he just asks for a payment. Let's look at the improved design. Now, the customer class exposes a public method named getPayment, 
while the underlying wallet object is now contained in a private field. No one except the customer has access to its wallet. The paper boy now is forced to ask the customer to get a payment. The paper boy now does not have the rights and by the way the responsibility, as in the previous design, to fumble in the customer's wallet. So the improved design is better in three ways. First, it better models the real world scenario. The paper boy code is now asking the customer for a payment. The paper boy does not have direct access to the wallet. Second, the wallet class can now change and the paper boy is completely isolated from that change. Third, we are now free to change the implementation of the get payment method. To sum up, I want to say that the rule about the number of dots sometimes can be deceitful. The thing is that the law of Demeter is not about the number of dots actually. This law is about reducing the coupling and improving the encapsulation. When we are talking about data structures, like data structures which are exposed by the Excel document, it's perfectly fine when its API allows you dig the structure of the document, like Excel document, dot sheet, dot cell, and so on. The same can be applied to Fluent APIs, when each call returns an object, so you can build method chains. You'll see the method chaining approach in the module about errors handling. So, as always, do not treat rules as dogmas and try to understand the underlying meaning of the rule, instead of applying rules blindly.